there were about five lies which were unearthed in 1929, in the, the summer of, in the winter, sorry, of 1929, by Sir Leonard Woolley, who was conducting an excavation there in, uh, in southern Iraq, along with the University of, of um, Pennsylvania. And uh, uh, they discovered a great death pit, rural tombs and so forth, and there were five lies laying there. They had been crushed by the earth because unlike with ancient Egypt, the uh, tombs were not in chambers. Uh, people and their uh, object were simply buried. Sometimes bodies were in special containers made of, of stone. Sometimes it was made of pottery and sometimes it was simply let uh, down covered with, with the ground, with the soil. So the instruments were not in a very good nick, obviously. They, were, they had been crushed by tons of earth because these tombs were really quite deep. And uh, they are dated about 2600 BC. So the only instruments which were left almost uh, uh, um, in their entirety were two of these which were covered with silver. And uh, because they were covered with silver and of course they were crushed, it was possible to uh, lift them off the ground very carefully. Uh, and prior they had been covered with wax so to facilitate the lifting. And then once they were away, they could be transported to the British Museum. And then at the museum, uh, they were carefully cleaned up. And uh, this silver lie which was uh, which stayed at the British Museum was then examined. Uh, 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 drawings were made of it uh, very carefully, and then after some years, it was decided uh, that was in the sixties that it should be reconstructed. So therefore, there was a team led by Podro, and they started to lift off all the bits of silver, number them. Uh, uh, put them aside, then decided on the major uh, size and volume of the structure, which had been of wood, and made a, a, a plastic uh, model of it, on which they glued back each of the little silver bits in order to reconstruct the instrument. Organological issues were the most important to start with, in that when the silver which had corroded immensely, it was taken off the, the uh, um, wax uh, uh, material which preserved them uh, after the excavation and prior to the reconstruction. The, the silver was then um, placed in special kilns in order that the corrosion would uh, disappear, leaving uh, proper silver. But this uh, way of, of dealing with the silver had very bad results in the sense that silver became very elastic and didn't want to stay, to stay uh, still. It always curved like crisps. So there were many methods which were devised, different types of glue to see if the, the silver would finally stick onto the plastic. And it was a hell of a job. It took months before the uh, uh, bits of silver uh, managed to fit on the, on the instrument. But so also there were other issues. In, in the 60s, the purpose of reconstructing a musical instrument was more uh, regarding its aspect than its value as a mu musical instrument. So therefore, many, many of the impo important details of its structure were got rid of to the profit of how the instrument looked. And uh, there were many artistic licenses regarding its reconstruction it was an absolute disaster. And actually, the instrument, as it stands in the British Museum, is, is, has no value of organology for anybody simply looking at it. What was important is all the notes which I have read at the museum, many, many notes of reconstruction, and all the origin drawings. But the instrument, as it stands, has got no organological value whatsoever. It is a total mess. Uh, very sad. This is why I decided to, to reconstruct it. <coughs> and the, the first most important thing is that uh, Woolley noted that when he lifted the soundboard of the instrument, or rather the sound box, is that both sides had been crushed one against the other. And when these two layers were separated, it was 
uh, they revealed that there was only a very thin layer of dust between the two uh, plates of silver. And this was so extremely important because it meant that there was, the silver was not glued or positioned on a support which might have been wood, which could have been leather, whatever. Uh, it simply meant that the soundboards, the front one and the back one, were indeed made of silver and that the silver was about uh, 40% of a millimetre, for hundreds of a millimetre. This was so incredibly important. Because it's the first time in the history of musical instruments that we have soundboards in silver. Uh, we thought that uh, prior to this, uh, we thought that mainly they were made of wood, they were made of leather, because uh, and mainly of leather, of raw hide rather more than leather, because it's a material which, when dries, is extremely strong and doesn't suffer from variations in the humidity levels in the atmosphere. So totally suitable for southern Iraq. Wood is less appropriate because, firstly, uh, they would have needed to have special saws to to saw. Uh, a plate of wood, a plank of wood, which was would have been only one millimeter point five in thickness, and then they would have to glue uh, uh, planks one against the other to finally manage to make a full soundboard. And I do not believe that this was possible at that time, because they didn't have the proper equipment. And that secondly, had they managed to have the technology to uh, to build a soundboard in this way, then it would have cracked all the time. Because in southern Iraq you have levels of hygrometry which can be very high at certain times of the year and suddenly it can become, ex the, 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 the climate dries suddenly and you can have just as little as 5% hygrometry. So between saturation of humidity in the air to 5% it is absolutely uh, um, impossible uh, to have a plant which remains on split. So this proposal is not a, a valid one.